Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining in for Harnessing Invariant Natural Killer T Cells for Off the Shelf Cancer Therapy presented by Dr. Lady Yang. Dr. Yang received her PhD degree in biology from Caltech, studying with Dr. David Baltimore. She's currently in an associate professor of microbiology, immunology, and molecular genetics at UCLA. Her research covers tumor immunology and cancer immunotherapy with a special focus on developing gene and cell-based immunotherapy for cancer. So far, her work has impressively resulted in over 60 publications, 20 patents, two clinical trials, and two biotech startups. For a complete biography of Dr. Yang, you may click her name in the presenter window on your screen. I'm Dennis Chang, product manager of mRNA service. I'll be your moderator for this talk. We encourage you to participate this session by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type there, type them into the field below and click send. You may also submit any technical issues here as well. So with Dr. Yang's um, video, we have some technical issues. So she will appear after the presentation for the Q&A. And if, if you see her screen flashing red, that's not your pro problem. It's a technical issue from our end. We'll close her camera for now. And uh, without further ado, Dr. Yan, please feel free to start your presentation. Yes, thank you very much, Bruce, for your very kind introduction. And I thank Joyce and the, the uh, other organizer, you know, invite me to join your very exciting symposium. Uh, today, I have the pleasure to share with you uh, my lab's research. We work on this interesting type of cell called the invariant natural killer T cell, INKT cells. Uh, I'll uh, give you some introduction about what those cells are and share with you some recent progresses in uh, my lab, like on utilizing the cell for cancer immunotherapy. So what are INKT cells? Uh, if you consider a drop of human blood, it contains about 10 million total blood cells. There's about 0.1 million uh, white blood cells. Those are the immune cells. Okay, And within the immune cells, we have around 5,000 conventional T cells. Those are the T cells we commonly know. And when we talk about the CAR T cell therapy, other cell therapy, those are the T cells we talk about. We have around 10 INKT cells in one drop of the blood. Very small number, okay? But in the war against cancer, if you consider the 5,000 conventional T cells can form this food soldiers really can participate in the big battles, the INKT cells, despite that small number, they can be considered as special forces. Now in small number, but they move strong, uh, faster and they behave stronger, you know, for joining the war, attacking cancer. So what really those cells are, okay, in scientist's eye. In scientist's eye, they are a small subset of alpha beta T cells. Unlike the conventional alpha beta T cells, they recognize the classical MHC1 and 2 and they recognize protein, you know, antigen. INKT cells display this semi invariant TCR. So all the INKT cells within a person and across different people, they share the same T cell receptor. Okay. That the T cell receptor recognize something. MHC1 like, but not classical MHC molecule called CD1D. And that display an antigen, not protein antigen, but the glycolipid antigen. Okay. And those cells, they have both the T cell feature and the natural killer cell feature. They can utilize multiple mechanisms for tumor killing. And they can certainly be engineered to express a CAR antigen to enhance and direct tumor killing. And most importantly, because they do not you know, recognize the polymorphic MHC molecules, those cells can be safely transferred across different individuals. So there's a no GVHD risk and makes them a very attractive candidate for utilize as allogenic cell therapy. But there's one challenge, right? So as described, there's a very low number 
of them, you know, in the peripheral blood, and there's high variability between people. So if we try to expand those cells from a healthy donor, you know, peripheral blood, we are talking about a range of zero point zero zero one to one percent, you know, within the blood to be those cells. So make it a very challenging task to expand enough of those cells reliably, you know, for the therapeutic application. So how do we overcome that uh, limitation? Um, there are multiple strategies, you know, people can apply. And the, the specific strategy my lab has been focused on is to use the stem cell engineering technology, okay? So we aim to engineer stem cells to differentiate into the special type of very, you know, useful cells. I'll tell you how we do that. Here is our strategy. Okay, so we go to the stem cell called a hematopoietic stem cell, HSC, another name is called a blood stem cell. Those cells live in the bone marrow, you know, of adult human, give rise to all lineage of blood cells, including the, uh, uh, all the immune cells, including INKT cells. Okay, so how do we do that? We utilize a technology, you know, strategy called the T cell receptor, you know, transgenic technology. Okay, uh, this technology depends on what kind of T cell receptor we um, engineer into the HSC. And then if we program the differentiation properly, then we will, you know, generate the mature T cells. And that will carry the feature of the originality of the T cell receptor. So my, my own personal research, like back in many years ago, when I was a PhD student, I proved in my research that if we gave the CD8, you know, T cell receptor, you know, we will be able to generate CD8 cytotoxic T cells using the strategy. If we give CD4 helper T cell, you know, receptor will generate helper T cells. And in my uh, independent lab at UCLA, that uh, we grow, you know, interest in this INK T cells, and we really like that potential for the allogeneic cell therapy. So we ask the question, if we utilize strategy, if we give the INKT T cell receptor to the hematopoietic stem cell, can we program the um, generation of the special type of cells? And I'm happy to report the answer is yes. Okay, so we published the first proof principle, you know, study in 2015, you know, proof like in the animal, in a mouse model, like we can produce the mouse INKT cells in this way. And of course, like in order to think about a clinical application, we need to prove the strategy also work for human INKT cells. And this is the focus of the uh, topic Today, I'm going to show you, you know, quite a bit of data like generated from my lab showing the feasibility of this approach. So the work, um, the initial work has published in 2021, um, Cell Report Medicine. You know, those are um, the two very talented uh, graduate students, Charlie and Alice, who has uh, been leading, you know, that research. So what we have been proved is that we showed the preclinical development of allogenic HSC engineered INKT cells for off-the-shelf cancer immunotherapy. We showed that we can generate a high number of those with uh, uh, purity and robustness. We showed that the engineered cells can effectively target tumor cells using multiple mechanisms. And we also showed those cells exhibit a high safety profile and the low immunogenicity. Those are very important features to develop allogenic cell therapy. And overall, you know, that's a, a set of pretty comprehensive preclinical study demonstrate feasibility, safety, and the cancer therapy potential. And the following slides, I will go quite quick and just highlight, you know, some uh, major part of those preclinical data. First, 
is the production. Okay, so here is the approach we use. The we use the uh, human CD thirty four positive HSCs. It can be you know uh, either from the cord blood resource or the GCSF mobilized peripheral blood. Okay, so those cells will be engineered with a lentiwack to deliver the necessary transgene, absolutely including the human INKT T cell receptor. Okay, and then we put it into a in vitro culture. The reported you know research we use this uh, artificial cymic organoid culture ATO culture, and we do this in collaboration with our colleague Gabe Crooks at UCLA, whose lab developed this very nice you know, ATO culture, which supports the uh, T cell, human T cell differentiation in a culture dish. Okay, and uh, later on, my lab, you know, continued to develop a, a more advanced version of the culture, and I'm happy to mention. And now we can, you know, uh, grow the cells at a similar yield and purity, you know, using a totally feed-free and serum-free culture procedure. Okay, so the take-home message is it's a very uh, robust, you know, procedure. From uh, one single cord blood, we can generate about ten to the twelve, you know, it's trillion, you know, level of the cells, and uh, um, this can be formulated if based on the proved CAR T cell therapy, and uh, it can be formulated into about a thousand to ten thousand doses. Okay, and those are really few. It's almost contain clonal transgenic cells. And the cells, you know, the overall genomic feature looks like very much like their uh, endogenous INKT uh, counterpart. Next, we look at the phenotype. I mean, there are many surface biomarkers we check. Overall, we find that those cells display typical INKT cell phenotype, which means they express really high level, you know, of the effect molecules and the homing molecule. Those are very useful, you know, for their uh, intention used for cancer therapy. And the next, we uh, looked at the uh, targeting, tumor targeting capacity of those cells. As mentioned, you know, as this special type of cell, beside the T cell feature, they also have the natural killer cell feature. So this study, you know, overall shows that uh, even without any further car engineering and other engineering, those cells can already have an uh, intrinsic capacity to target a uh, quite large range of the tumor, you know, human tumor cell line over here, listed leukemia, multiple myeloma, melanoma, lung cancer, prostate cancer. So they already have some decent ability to attack those tumor cells. And as mentioned, like uh, we can, you know, uh, think about uh, further engineer those cells to in further improve their tumor targeting ability by incorporating the tumor targeting molecules, such as chimeric antigen receptor CAR, right? So in this case, that after we generate the INKT cells, we incorporate one more engineering step, you know, using a uh, retrovirus over here deliver a car. Here is a BCMA targeting car. So the engineered cells now can target BCMA positive multiple myeloma cells. Okay, we can successfully generate those cells at very high, you know, uh, efficiency. And the ended up results of the cells now have a three, you know, mechanism to attack the tumor cells, right? They can use their intrinsic INKT T cell receptor. They can use this uh, intrinsic NK targeting, you know, capacity, and they can also use the transgenic CAR, you know, receptor to really guide the recognition of the tumor cells. And all three mechanisms can work together. It also, you know, provide another attractive, you know, uh, uh, feature, which is if a therapeutic cell can target the tumor through multiple angles, multiple mechanisms, then that can dramatically reduce the chance of the tumor to mutate certain antigen and get away from the immune attack um, um, phenomena commonly known as immune evasion. 
Okay, so we have, you know, tested all the in vitro culture and shows that the cell are very capable and how they behave in vivo, right? So like it's a combination of the tumor attacking ability and the ability to persist and, you know, uh, really traffic to the tumor side within a living uh, creature. And in this case, we use the preclinical mouse model. Okay, it's a mouse model, but we grow human tumor and we transfer the human therapeutical uh, candidate cells in the animal model. Okay, so overall message over here, we tested the low, you know, um, and, uh, uh, the heavy load and the relatively lower tumor load, you know, situation, and we showed that uh, at the uh, relatively controllable, you know, tumor load situation, our therapeutic cells, uh, the allogenic BK, NKT cells, can effectively eliminate tumor, okay, and then achieve this long-term tumor-free survival, okay, and uh, for a very heavy tumor load, like it's uh, impossible to eliminate all the tumor, the cell can still effectively control the tumor growth and then significantly elongate the survival of the uh, animals. I should point it out that in all the studies, we include the uh, conventional BCAR T cells as a benchmark control. And uh, compared to the benchmark control, the uh, allogenic, you know, HSA and KT cells did show, you know, quite a bit of advantage in particular for the long-term survival of the animal because of the both the, you know, strong tumor efficacy as well as the free of GVHD, you know, capacity. And that is not the case for the conventional T cells. Yeah, uh, further, you know, on safety, if we try to develop a novel type of uh, cell therapy product, safety, of course, is, you know, enormously important, right? So two kind of safety, you know, concern over here. Number one is uh, the uh, GVHD, right? We mentioned that uh, fundamentally, those cells should be free of GVHD risk. And we use this classical mixed lymph lymphocyte reaction assay to confirm when we mix the cells with random donor, you know, uh, PBMC, we don't see any response. Okay. And then that's confirmed in the animal model, like if we uh, long termly tracking the animal and look at the individual tissues, we don't see any, you know, sign of the tissue damage and the inflammation. Okay, and uh, again, it's very much different, you know, compared to the conventional T cells, which readily, you know, induce the GVHD and cause massive tissue damage in uh, transplanted animals. Another is the general toxicity. Uh, we track the animals for a really long time, you know, track the body weight, track the behavior, all of those. And we didn't observe any, you know, uh, obvious like uh, um, uh, health concern and the side effect uh, for the cell to uh, receive the allogenic HLC INKT cells. Another uh, important uh, consideration for developing allogenic cell therapy is those cell need to sustain, you know, persist in a recipient animal with a functional immune system, okay, which means they need to resist to the immune rejection by the host immune cells and the mainly uh, T cells and the NK cell mediated immune reaction reaction. So here we have developed, you know, many assays to assess those two features. The take home message is that overall those transgenic engineered cells, they express a low level of surface MHC, you know, molecule, and therefore they resist to T cell mediated ILO rejection. And meanwhile, they also express a low level of surface stress molecule that gives them resistance to the host NK cell mediated ILO rejection. So the combination message is that those cells, you know, are safe, GVHD risk free, and uh, potent tumor killers. And meanwhile, they show this low immunogenicity and can, you know, uh, resist to the allo rejection pretty well. And all of those combined together makes them attractive 
uh, candidates for developing the allogeneic cell therapy. And the further you know, gene editing can be incorporated if we want to further you know, a kind of a, um, engineer the cell to make them even lower immunogenicity, right? To eliminate all the, of all the surface MHC molecule that can be done by incorporating CRISPR-Cas9 uh, gene edit editing step. And that can be achieved at a really high efficiency without the interfere with the uh, cell production and the yield and the quality of those cells. And gene edited cells still can be produced, can be functional, and both in vitro, in vivo assay, you know, confirmed that. Okay, to summarize our ongoing, you know, research, we have successfully developed a feed-free serum-free culture method to produce the allogenic CAR INKT cells. There are preclinical studies ongoing to develop the allocar and KT cell therapy for a large array of blood cancers and solid tumors. And the name over here, you can read in multiple myeloma, AML, BALL for the blood cancer and for the solid tumor, the ovarian cancer is a leading target, but we also can cover breast cancer, prostate, pancreatic, kidney, lung, and the liver cancers. Uh, this technology is licensed by a biotech company, RPA Bio, for commercial development. I'll go a little bit further, like beyond the INKT cells, to tell you a little bit bigger picture of what are the other research you know, direction ongoing in my lab. Okay, so beyond the INKT cells, there are many, you know, turned out to be the many other unconventional T cells, also named innate T cells, uh, have some, you know, interesting feature similar as INKT cells, but of course have their unique capacity and well certainly have, a, you know, a different, you know, aspect of the application for the therapy, even targeting cancer. Right. So those are names called uh, gamma data T cells. They are mucosal associated invariant T cell mate cells. So my lab are working, you know, on those cells too. And uh, currently we are, you know, doing stem cell engineering, focus on the hematopoietic stem cell, but we also want to extend the engineering, go down further, right, to the origin of the cells. So the plur pluripotent cells, stem cells, like iPSCs, we are developing this technology now. So beyond directly attacking tumor cells, INKT cell as well as the other, you know, the cells we are working on now. And the, some of them have this attractive feature of attacking the tumor microenvironment. Okay. So besides directly kill tumor, they can also alter, modulate the tumor microenvironment and change the immunosuppressive environment and make this whole you know, therapy more effective. And that's a feature we are focusing on harnessing, you know, right now. I'll stop over here and thank my lab members, you know, especially the one uh, highlighted in red over here, those students, you know, current member and past member participate in the work I just showed you. I would like to thank our collaborators and the funding support. And um, uh, importantly, I would like to thank you, audience, for your attention. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Dr. Yang, for your excellent presentation and really excited to see uh, your result and the future applications of it. And we'll now start the live Q&A session of the webinar. And if you have any questions you'd like to ask again, please feel free to put down your uh, questions on the chat into the chat box below. So let's start. I see we do have some questions. So the first question, um, Dr. Yang, could you comment on the potential of INKT cells for treating solid tumors? Uh, certainly, yeah, uh, Bruce, this is one, you know, uh, aspect actually we really like, you know, interested about INKT cells. So the, as mentioned, the INKT cell, they have this special T cell receptor and they um, recognize the CD1D, you know, molecule, right? And presenting the lipid antigen. 
So there's something special about the CD1 D and the uh, lipid antigen in tumor, solid tumor microenvironment. The, uh, so when we consider it's an immunosuppressive tumor microenvironment, they are composed by the immunosuppressive cells, right? The most studied include the tumor-associated microphages and the myeloid-derived suppressive cells, MDSCs. And those two types of cells, interestingly, happen to express a really high level of CD1D, okay? And the tumor, solid tumor microenvironment happen to contain really high level of the lipid antigen that can bind to CD1D. So a combination of that is that the a big part of the immunosuppressive tumor microenvironment in solid tumors are natural target for INKT cells. So we are very actively pursuing that and uh, actually see some quite dramatic um, results. For instance, if we collect the primary solid tumor you know, samples from cancer patient, if we mix the, those samples together with our engineered INKT cells, we can see very effective and very specific elimination of the TAMS MDSCs. And that happened to not only one type of solid tumor, it happened to almost all the solid tumor type. Uh, I mean, we tested more than five, okay? So like tumor types. So uh, we think that can be a very uh, attractive, you know, unique uh, aspect of the INKT cell-based cell therapy compared with the conventional T cell therapy because conventional T cell therapy are not equipped with that part of the you know, function, right? Thank you, Dr. Yan, with the, um, the, the explanation. Um, I think following on that, um, we do see some follow-up, some more questions. So here we have another um, audience asking, uh, what are some obstacles or limitations that remain to facilitate or improve the manufacturing of INKT cells for therapies? Uh, certainly, yeah. So, well, I mean, for the manufacturing, is that how to scale up, right? And how to, mm -hmm. you know, have the CMC procedure really uh, robust and uh, low cost, <laughs> right? So like all of this, uh, it's a new uh, cell therapy platform. I would say it will be, you know, the first inhuman kind of uh, uh, trial, you know, we are doing. So the um, there's no very obvious obstacle, okay? HSC culture, you know, collection, especially from the cold blood um, origin, you know, the supply chain is established. I mean, the culture protocol is pretty much established. Uh, we use a lenti vector, you know, based gene delivery, and that's pretty well uh, established. And uh, especially in the context of engineering HSCs, okay. And the expansion protocol, of course, you know, is the new, you know, technology, you know, we developed. And um, it's a feed-free, it's a serum-free. So, like, uh, um, fundamentally. Um, we don't see too much problem for scale up and the impractical, it still needed to work out. I think that is um, the commercial side, the this, uh, startup company up here, Bio, is focusing on, you know, doing this. Yes. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think um, scaling up is always a problem, but it uh, seems like for this um, solution, we have less limitations and uh, we're, we're facing less challenge with this as well. Yeah, wait. So um, I think okay. So I think we do have another question coming up. Um, so this question was around how do you engineer INKT cell uh, differ from conventional CAR T cells in persistent and exhaustion properties? That's a, a very good question too. Uh, so um, like all T cells, those um they are not uh, you know like a uh, out of the 
a box and unnatural cells. <laughs> okay, they are T cells. They certainly will share the machinery, like control the exhaustion, you know, control the, you know, dysfunction, you know, of the T cells. So when they encounter tumor and hang around in the tumor, not too much. Okay, I would not say NKT is just uniquely, you know, immune of that. They're no, not. But we can think about, you know, uh, engineering strategies to help them, you know, uh, to overcome it. And we can certainly improve the culture condition to make them more fit, right? So the fact that the NKT cells we study over here derived from stem cell instead of just enormously expanded from a mature, you know, cell pool from the periphery blood make a difference because coming from stem cell means they are more like at the younger you know, age of their life, okay? The telomere will be long, you know, kind of the uh, immune potential, you know, the memory potential will be higher, okay? That's number one. Number two is that the engineering approach you can certainly think about, right? So there are some, you know, molecules already known. It's very helpful you know, for improved persistence and the memory, you know, uh, formation and maintenance of the T cells and which work for NK T cells and also work for the other immune cells. One of such molecule, for instance, is L15, okay? So incorporate L15 transgene, you know, which we actually are doing now in our research can really help, you know, to further improve the uh, in vivo performance, okay? Thank you, Dr. Yan, for, for walking through um, the different um, differences, the differences between NK T cells and conventional CAR T cells. So um, I think that was very clear. And let's see if we have any additional questions coming up. So if you have any further questions, um, just a reminder, please put it down in the chat box. Or um, after the talk, you can also uh, you can also reach out to Dr. Yan through our channel. Okay, so I think um, we do have three minutes more. Um, if there's no more questions, I think um, thank you very much again, Dr. Yang, for today's talk. And uh, it was very exciting to learn about your research and really looking forward to its future um, applications. It was very good. Um, really thank you again for attending today's session and also the audience as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bruce. My pleasure. Bye.